Hello. Um, in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to calculate a firm's free cash flow and forecast it for the next few years. Um, free cash flow basically refers to the cash produced by a firm's operation. Uh, it tells us how much money or cash a firm can generate doing what it's supposed to do, you know, buying and reselling products or making something, offering a service. Um, another way that people often think about it is the amount of cash a firm would make as though it had no debt. Um, and because we want to look at it only from the cash generated from operations, uh, we need to make some adjustments both for non-cash expenses and for financing cash flows, uh, such as borrowing and, um, in the case of someone, a firm who has marketable securities or a good chunk of cash, um, they're actually acting as lenders. So here is our spreadsheet. You can tell that it's the same one that we used in the earlier tutorial. Um, it's the information from the end of chapter, problem 13, um, a company called Donna's. Um, you will want to have made sure that you have read um, the part of the chapter through the free cash flow um, instead of being through 226, as it says in this right here. We're going to change that. I want that to say 228 or even, yes, we're going to call it 229. All right, now that that's all set up, let's get going. I'm going to scroll down. We can hide most of our value drivers for free cash flow, um, but we may need to come back to a couple of them. So down here, we're going to be working in this area, free cash flow calculations, that's at the bottom. Um, and in order to do free cash flow calculations, uh, we need our income statement, our balance sheet, and we're also going to need uh, the interest, um, we're going to need our tax rate, and we're going to need the rates of interest that we pay on debt and the interest rates that we earn on cash. And so when we get down here to the bottom, I'm going to need to scroll up, which I know can be a little bit frustrating. All right, so we're going to start calculating free cash flow, or cash flow from operations, or the amount of cash a firm generates if, if we can pretend that they have no debt at all and the owners provide the only financing for the company. It's tempting to start here in year zero, <coughs> but when we look at free cash flow, we look at it um, over the course of a year, and since we don't have the year previous to zero, we can't calculate free cash flow in year zero. So I always like to ask students, or even for myself, I like to gray this out so that I know where I'm starting. So we don't do cash flow, free cash flow for year zero. We're doing free cash flow in this year, in the year that represents um, the first year, uh, from the beginning of the year, which is the end of year zero, to the end of the year, which is the, the data we get from year one. So free cash flow uh, we'll start with our net income or profit after tax, which is an accounting measure that has uh, non-cash expenses in there like depreciation, but also has some financing things uh, like interest, which we're going to try to remove from our calculations. So we'll start by adding back our depreciation because it's a non-cash expense, and so we still have that cash. You probably remember that idea from accounting. And by entering that as a negative number, right, depreciation was an expense here, so it's negative. By adding a negative here, I have it as a positive number. And if I have all these with the right signs, I can just sum them. So we're going to have an increase in current assets. These next two, current assets and current liabilities, um, represent money that a firm spends for assets. It's on inventories and accounts receivable, things like that, uh, that we don't get to write on the income statement. Uh, we don't get to deduct them for tax purposes, but yet they still are a use of cash for the firm. And the money that the firm has used to increase its current assets from one year to the next is not cash that that firm has available to use. right? So we need to remove that from our free cash flow because we know that we don't have that cash. Um, it isn't on the income statement, so we need to get that data from the balance sheet. So our increase in current assets is represented by this year's current assets minus last year's current assets, but because that's a use of cash, we want that number to be negative. So it is equal to the negative version, if we go up here to current assets, it looks like we've got a, a $5,000 maybe increase or something like that. Uh, $5,650 increase, and so we, that means that we spent or expended $5,000 on uh, current assets. So that's cash we don't have, but that calculation doesn't show up on the income statement. 
current liabilities are the way we finance those. And so since that's operational, we're going to allow that to count because our current liabilities usually don't carry, well, often our spontaneous liabilities that work, that deal with funding the operations of the company. And so when we increased our current liabilities by $3,245, basically what that meant is that that was an inflow of cash related to operations, so we're going to count it. Another thing is that when we buy fixed assets, that can represent a substantial outflow of cash for a firm, but it doesn't show up on the income statement. So we could actually uh, be very strapped for cash based on investments that we've made. So our increased in fixed assets at cost, we are going to subtract them from our free cash flow because that's not cash that we have. So we had $60,789 in fixed assets at cost at the end of the year when we only had 47000 at the beginning of the year. And what that means is that we spent 13000 on assets, right? And that's, we spent more on assets than we had in net income. And since that's an expenditure, pardon me, where I go back and fix this, since we're expending that money, we need to have it as a negative amount. So our expenditures on fixed assets is actually greater than our net income. It's extremely important. And then we want to sort of uh, neutralize the effect of interest uh, because we're not going to act. We're going to try to pretend we're not a lender and we're going to pretend that we're not a borrower. So we're going to look at our after tax interest on debt and we're going to subtract or we're going to add that back uh, because that's a financing cash flow not related to operations. So we paid interest in the amount of 20. 2160 and I'm going to start that as a negative number and we want it after tax so we're going to multiply that by 1 minus the tax rate so I'm going to need to scroll up my tax rate is 36 percent so I multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate because we paid that but the the benefit the tax shield is real so our after tax interest on debt was 1300 which means that the tax shield was the difference between those and our after tax interest on cash that's also after tax because we did pay that tax that was a real cash flow uh, negative because we're going to subtract that out multiplied again by 1 minus the tax rate I'm going to scroll close my parentheses and hit return so I'm quickly going to double check all my signs. Net income is positive, depreciation is positive, current assets, they increased. I want to subtract that because it's cash we don't have. That's great. We increased current liabilities. That helps fund that increase in current assets. That is a cash inflow, and we're going to count that. Um, we spent money on fixed assets, and so that's a negative uh, cash use of cash. And then we're going to add back the debt payments that we made because we're trying to look at this as though we had no debt. Um, also we're going to look at it as though we're not a, a supplier of funds. Okay, so that looks good. And then I'm going to use my sum command because I've adjusted all these signs so that they're facing the right direction. I close my parentheses and I hit return. So my free cash flow for the year was $3,962. Pardon me. I'm going to highlight these all and drag them to the right. And if I've entered all my formulas correctly, I should be able to see my free cash flow from year to year. And there should be numbers in all of these cells. And that looks good. This firm looks as though it's having a free cash flow that is going to increase between year one to year five. All right, there's free cash flow. Happy calculating.